Welcome back to another science learning series with Mr. Knight. Today we're going to look at photosynthesis. Now, photosynthesis is very important for plants to produce their food. It's also important to provide energy for food chains and the ecosystem. So all organisms in an ecosystem will depend on photosynthesis for their food, whether directly or indirectly. Now, photosynthesis takes place inside of an organ known as the leaf. So the leaf is the organ for photosynthesis. What is happening in the leaf is that the leaf will absorb some light. Inside of the leaf, carbon dioxide and water will be combined to give you glucose and oxygen will be produced. Now, if you zoom into a leaf, you'll find some photosynthetic cells. These photosynthetic cells, they are particularly named polysade mesophyll cells and the spongy mesophyll cells. If you go further in these cells, you will find an organelle known as chloroplast, and chloroplast is where photosynthesis actually takes place. Inside chloroplast, you have a pigment known as chlorophyll, which is a green pigment. Chlorophyll is responsible to absorb light. Photosynthesis can be defined in many, many different ways. So I'm going to look at a very few of them. The very basic one is that is a process by which plants and plant-like organisms make their own food. Another one is that photosynthesis is a process by which plants and plant-like organisms convert carbon dioxide and water into sugars. Another definition is that is a process by which plants convert inorganic substances to organic substances. Photosynthesis can also be defined as a process by which carbon dioxide reacts with water in the presence of light to produce glucose and oxygen. The bottom line with all of these definitions is that it is a food-making process in the presence of light. Now, the word equation for photosynthesis is that the organism, such as plant and plant-like organism, will require carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide will react with water in the presence of light, and light will be absorbed by chlorophyll. When all of this takes place, a reaction will occur, and the reaction will produce glucose and oxygen. Now, oxygen is considered to be the waste product, or otherwise called the byproduct. So the reactants for this reaction, it, um, they are carbon dioxide and water. The products are glucose and oxygen. However, the oxygen must be excreted since it is a waste. Oxygen is being excreted through the leaf by the stomata. The balanced chemical equation will be carbon dioxide, react with water, produce glucose and oxygen. However, if you notice these, red, these numbers in red, they are used to balance of the equation. What that means is that this number will cause each atom on either side of the reaction to be the same. So if you check the number of carbon, the number of hydrogen, and the number of oxygen on either side, they should be the same. Hence, the reaction is balanced. So let's make a quick check. On this side, we have six carbon. On this side, we also have six carbon. So a total of six carbon on, on both sides. The total number of hydrogen will be six times two is 12. On this side, is, it is 12. So it's 12 on either side. The number of oxygen will be six times two, which is 12, plus six times one, which is six. So therefore, it gives you a total of 18 on the reactant side. On this side, it is six plus 6 times 2, which is 12, so give you a total of 18 oxygen on the product side as well. So hence, the equation is balanced. Now, light is important for photosynthesis, but we're going to figure out now why light is so important. We understand and we know that light provides energy. But what is happening with this energy from light within leaf? Well, when leaves absorb light, it will kick some electrons out of the chlorophyll, and this will cause water molecules to split. So light is important to split water molecules. Let's take a look. 
So light goes in, split the water molecules, you will get H plus ions, which is hydrogen ions, and oxygen. The oxygen will be excreted out of the leaf. The, the H plus ions will react with carbon dioxide to produce glucose. So let's take one more look at that. The light goes in, split the water molecules. H plus ions will react with carbon dioxide to produce glucose. However, when water is being split, there are some free electrons which, which are picked up by NADP plus the form NADPH, and you'll get some energy in the form of ATP. Now, more about light is that white light contains seven different colors. These colors are abbreviated as Roy GBIV. Now, Roy GBIV is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Now, a little bit more about light. Um, just a point to note is that when light passes through prism-like objects, such as water molecules or glass prism, the light will refract and the light will disperse the reason why light disperses in different colors is because each of these colors will have different wavelength. Now, importantly, how do we see objects is because of light. So I'm going to explain what is happening to this in terms of light, and then we'll apply this to photosynthesis. So, for example, if you're looking at a, at a green object, you see the object being green because green light is being reflected and the other colors are being absorbed. So the ROY and BIV will be, absorb, will be absorbed, but the green light will be reflected. If you look at a blue object, the blue light will be reflected. The ROY, G, indigo and violet will be absorbed. If you're looking at a red object, the red will be reflected and the other colors will be absorbed. Interestingly, in two other colors, such as white objects, so let's say this object is white and white light passes through it, it reflects all the colors. So therefore, no color of light is being absorbed. And this is the reason why in summertime, you are um, they advise to wear light color clothes or white clothes, so light could be reflected instead of being absorbed. However, if the object is darker or black, then all the colors of light will be absorbed and none will be reflected and that is why dark color clothes tend to be warmer let's see how this is important for photosynthesis now look at this question why is what is the effect of applying only green light to plants so let's say the light that is applying to plant here is green light so think about it what do you think will happen and then you will see my answer first light will go into the plant and then notice what happened all the green light is being reflected and since all the green light being reflected and remember the statement only green light therefore no light will be absorbed and if there is no light being absorbed the rate of photosynthesis will decrease or stop so you can just look at that one more time light goes in as green all of that will be reflected and once it is being reflected no light being absorbed hence the rate of photosynthesis will decrease or definitely stop very important to note is that photosynthesis has two stages. We have a light dependent stage, which means it requires light to take place. And we also have the, um, the light independent stage, which is usually called previously as the dark stage. It is not used anymore because it can be a very misleading statement. What is happening in the light dependent stage? Notice depending on light is that light is used to split water molecules and when water molecules are split they form H plus ions and oxygen and you also have some ATP which is energy and NADPH those are also formed in the light independent stage it is taking place when light is present but it does not need a light to take place why it must happen when light is present is because it must occur after the light dependent but it itself is not using the light. So light is not used. Carbon dioxide reacts with hydrogen ions to form 
glucose so in other words you have simple sugars being formed in the light independent stage the light independent stage is also called the calvin cycle and the light dependent stage is also called the etc now let's look at some factors that may affect the rate of photosynthesis and these factors include light intensity it includes the level of carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere it also includes the available the availability of water and also temperature now temperature will be an external environmental factor and i'm going to explain why is this important in affecting the rate of photosynthesis so a graph to present these is that light carbon dioxide and water will affect the rate of photosynthesis in the same way if you should increase any of the three the rate of photosynthesis will also increase however when you reach this maximum rate no matter how much you put in it it cannot pass that rate that is the threshold of photosynthesis it will maintain that high maximum rate and hence the graph will be like this however if they should decrease then the rate of photosynthesis will also decrease so therefore means now um, the rate of photosynthesis is proportional to the amount of light carbon dioxide and water however temperature is different the rate of photosynthesis will increase with temperature until you reach that maximum point that maximum point the temperature that is experienced at that point is known as the optimal temperature if you pass that optimal temperature the rate of photosynthesis start to decrease there are many reasons why this is happening one because higher temperature will destroy the enzymes that are needed for photosynthesis to take place also an increased temperature will increase the evaporation of water which will cause the stomata to eventually close if the stomata if they are closed then carbon dioxide cannot enter the leaf for photosynthesis so there are many reasons why the graph will have a decline after the optimal temperature now folks we're at the end of the lesson again i am very happy to be here with you and i hope to see you in the next lesson so see you soon